What's up guys, Sam Adams here and welcome to The Drop, which is a weekly series every single Monday here on the YouTube channel where I uh, talk about what video games are coming out this week just in case you do want to pick up something new. And uh, this week we've got a pretty major indie game coming out that I'm really excited for. It could be my indie game of the year if it turns out to be as good as it looks. But uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into it. So first off, you've got Volume coming out on the PC, PlayStation 4, and PlayStation Vita, and this is coming to us from the developer of Thomas Was Alone, which is a cool little indie game that has a lot to do with uh, uh, simplicity and shapes, I suppose is the best way to put it, but it really puts a lot of emphasis on the writing and the narration rather than the gameplay, even though the gameplay does feel really good. It just went to show that writing still plays a significant role in the creation of games, but I thought Thomas Was Alone was great, and so now the uh, maker of that has created Volume. Uh, the pure gameplay mechanics are something that's really cool. As you can see here, it's kind of like a, a puzzle game where you traverse these missions or these levels and you try to find diamonds and escape as a thief. I think it's pretty cool. The actual backstory is that there's a kid that finds a, a thieving simulation and he broadcasts these things on the internet and that is where you're actually playing it at. Kind of cool little backstory, but that's beside the point. The pure gameplay mechanics are what I really want to point out here. So, as you can see, there is a cone of sight, I suppose is the best way to put it, where enemies might be able to track you as you are traversing through the level collecting diamonds. Uh, there is no trickery there. If you stay out of that cone of sight, you are good to go. You don't have to worry about being caught. You don't have to worry about being killed. As long as you stay in that cone of sight, that is where it's at. And I think that's really cool because it goes back to the basic roots of this kind of stealthy game, uh, I guess a puzzle game. And I think that's something that we really could see more of. Um, Another really cool thing about this game is that the level creation tool is the actual creation tool that the developers use to make the uh, creation levels themselves whenever they're developing the game. So instead of just kind of tacking something on where they uh, throw a shortcut to all of the different uh, aspects of a game or a level just to be able to throw those levels out there, they actually supplied us with the literal creation tool that they use to make the game. And I thought that that was pretty cool, you know, you don't see that very often, so if you're looking to be a game developer, you might want to check it out, especially if you play on PC. But ultimately, it does look like it could be my indie game of the year if it turns out the way that I really do uh, hope it uh, turns out and also if it turns out the way that it looks. Looks like a great game. Can't wait to see how Mike Bithel, I believe is his name, does whenever volume comes out later this week again on the PC, PlayStation 4, and Vita. So next up, Resident Evil Revelations 2 is coming to the PlayStation Vita for $39.99, and this includes six episodes, four of which were released every two weeks earlier this year, and uh, they're all just kind of coming out in one giant bundle just in case you wanted to play the game rather than play it episodically uh, as each episode was released. But uh, one cool thing about this game coming out on the PlayStation Vita is that there is this giant raid mode that has 200 action-packed missions and 15 players where you just kind of complete these little tasks and you kill certain amounts of things rather than just going straight into a campaign, which is definitely going to appeal to the gamer on the go. And of course, the option to play two-player co-op is going to be there in the raid mode. So if you have a friend with a PlayStation Vita, that you have a friend with a PlayStation Vita. Anyways, um, yeah, if you have a friend with a PlayStation Vita, then you could pick this one up and play with them, but ultimately it caters primarily to the Resident Evil fans or the fans of third-person shooters. Either way, six episodes, 200 action-packed missions, 15 players. Can't go wrong, 40 bucks on the PlayStation Vita. Next up, Zombie is coming to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and this was originally released as a Wii U release title by the name of Zombie U which uh, got a 4.5 on GameSpot and was not that impressive, but it showed off what the console could do, I suppose, is uh, what the uh, game was really there to do, but uh, it had enough following to go to the Xbox One and PS4 and PC, so it's coming out this week, and uh, surprisingly enough, the screenshots don't look that bad, but um, it wasn't one of the best received games ever, mainly because whenever you were accessing your backpack to try and change out different items that your uh, character was carrying, zombies could still attack you. The game wasn't actually paused, which I suppose is a realistic mechanic, because if you are in the uh, actual zombie apocalypse as an actual person, you probably won't see a zombie coming up from behind you as you're looking for your flashlight or your gun in your actual backpack. So you can look at it that way or you could just look at it as a, uh, you know, a technical malfunction. Either way, it's coming out on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So if you're looking to pick up a new zombie game, you might want to pick this one up or you might just want to pick up Dead Rising 3 or perhaps Dying Light, which is on sale this week for $29.99 at Best Buy. Either way, zombie coming out on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. 
Finally, last but not least, quick to mention, a new episode of Tales of the Borderlands is coming out, and it is called Escape Plan Bravo, and continues the story of Rise and Fiona as they are trying to gain wealth and power respectfully. So, I mean, it sounds like a pretty good kind of episodic Telltale game, and of course, it is one of the headlining Telltale games of the year, and it's 5 bucks per episode, 20 bucks for a season pass, so if you are a fan of the Borderlands universe, if you like being on Pandora, hanging out with Claptrap, and shooting all the maniacs, and psychos then you might just want to pick this one up and again that $20 season pass is a pretty good deal and it's sometimes on sale on Green Man Gaming and G2A so you might want to keep an eye out for that but the uh, fourth episode of this Telltale Games franchise is coming out this week if you've really been looking forward to that. So there you guys have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, drop me a like down below and comment what games you are going to be picking up this week. Uh, primarily, I am looking forward to seeing volume. As you can tell, I went kind of in-depth on that one because it is a game that I actually think could be my indie game of the year. And uh, next week, Gears of War is coming out. Can't really wait for that. I actually pre-ordered that because I got into the beta. The beta was wonderful, so I'm actually getting that delivered to my home next Tuesday, and we'll be sure to talk about that. But uh, as of right now, I just want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. Be sure to share with your friends if you enjoyed and get my channel growing. And I'll talk to you soon. Peace.